ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋ ಭುನತ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತ ಮಾವಿತ್ಯುಷಾವಹೈ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಗಣ ಅಹಂ ಗಣಪತಿ ಹವಾಮಹೆ ಕವಿ ಕಬೀನಾಪಮಶ್ರವಸ್ತಮ ಚೇಷ್ಟರಾಜ್ಯ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಸ್ಪದ ಆನಶೃಣ್ವನ್ ಸೇದ ಸಾಧನ ಮಹಾಗಣಪತ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಭದ್ರ ಕರ್ಣೇ ಶೃಣುಯಾಮ ಭದ್ರ ಪಶ್ಯೇಮಾಕ್ಷಭೀರ್ಯಚತ್ರ ಸ್ಥಿರೈರಂಗೇ ತುಷ್ಟು ವಾಗಂ ಸಸ್ತನೂಭಿ ವಿಷೇಮ ದೇವಹಿತ ಯು ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನ ಇಂದ್ರೋ ವೃದ್ಧಸ್ರವಾ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನ ಪೂಷಾ ವಿಶ್ವೇದ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನುಸ್ತಾಕ್ಷ್ಯೋ ಅರಿಷ್ಟನೇಮಿ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನೋ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪದಿರ್ದಾತು ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದ ಪರಮಸುಖದ ಕೇವಲ ಜ್ಞಾನಮೂರ್ತಿ ತ್ವಂದ್ವಾತೀತ ಗಗನ ಸದೃಶ ತತ್ವಮಸ್ಯಾಲಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಏಕಂ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಿಮಲಮಚಲ ಸರ್ವೇ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಭೂತ ಭಾವಾತೀತ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಹಿತ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ ಭಾವಾತೀತ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಹಿತ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮ ಓಂ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಆತ್ಮ ಗಿರಿಜಾಮಿ ಸಹಜರ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಶರೀರ ಗೃಹ ಪೂಜಾ ತೇ ವಿಷಯೋ ಬಭೋ ಗರಜನ ನಿದ್ರಸಮಾಧಿಸ್ಥಿ ಸಂಚಾರ ಪದಯೋ ಪ್ರದಕ್ಷಿಣ ವಿಧಿ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಸರ್ವಾಗಿರೋ ಯತ್ಯತ್ಕರ್ಮಕರೋಮಿ ತತ್ತಖಿಲ ಶಂಭೋ ತವ ಆರಾಧನ ಯತ್ಯತ್ಕರ್ಮಕರೋಮಿ ತತ್ತಖಿಲ ಶಂಭೋ ತವ ಆರಾಧನ So let us read uh, these, couple of these uh, slokas. So, the name of the book is Upadesha Saram, the quintessential teaching. There are 30 verses in this. So the first uh, one. Kartru Rajnaya Prapyade Bhalam ಕರ್ಮ ಕಂ ಪರಂ ಕರ್ಮ ತಕ್ಷಟ್ ಒನ್ ಕೃತಿ ಮಹೋಧದ ಪದನ ಕಾರಣ ಫಲಮ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಗದಿ ನಿರೋಧಕ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಈಶ್ವರಾರ್ಪಿತಶೋಧಕ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಸಾಧಕ ಮನಸಿಗೆ ಈಶ್ವರಾರ್ಪಿತ ಚಿತ್ತಶೋಧಕ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಸಾಧಕ ಸೊ 
so we have to read three times every ishwararpidam nechaya kritam ishwararpidam nechaya kritam chitta shodhakam mukti sadhakam chitta shodhakam mukti sadhakam kaya vangmana karya muttamam Poojanam japa, chintanam kramat. Poojanam japa, chintanam kramat. Kaya vangmana, karya muttamam. Kaya vangmana, karya muttamam. Poojanam japa, chintanam kramat. Poojanam japa, chintanam kramat. Kaya Vangmana, three times, Kaya Vangmana, Karya Muttamam. Kaya Vangmana, Karya Muttamam. Poojanam Jabha, Chintanam Kramat. Poojanam Jabha, Chintanam Kramat. Jagada Ishadhi, Yukta Sevanam. Ashtamurti Bhrat Deva Poojanam Ashtamurti Bhrat Deva Poojanam Jagada Ishadhi Yukta Sevanam Jagada Ishadhi Yukta Sevanam Ashtamurti Bhrat Deva Poojanam Ashtamurti Bhrat Deva Poojanam Jagada Ishadhi Yukta Sevanam Jagada Ishadhi Yukta Sevanam Ashtamurti Bhrad Deva Poojanam Ashtamurti Bhrad Deva Poojanam Uttamastavad Uchamantadaha Jam Jabha Dhyana Muttamam Jitta Jam Jabha Dhyana Muttamam Uttamastavad Uchamantadaha Uttamastavad Uchamantadaha Jitta Jam Jabha Dhyana Muttamam Jitta Jam Jabha Dhyana Muttamam Uttamastavad Uchamantadaha Chitta Jam Jabha Dhyana Muttamam Ajyadharaya Shrodha Sasamam Sarala Chintanam Virala Dhafparam Ajyadharaya Shrodha Sasamam Sarala Chintanam Virala Dhafparam Ajyadharaya Shrodha Sasamam Sarala Chintanam Virala Dhafparam Bheda Bhavanat Soha Mityasau Bhavana Bhita Pavani Mata Bheda Bhavana Soha Mityasau Bhavana Bhita Pavani Mata Bhavana Bhita Pavani Mata 
ಭೇದ ಭಾವನಾತ್ ಸೋಹಮಿತ್ಯಸೌ ಭಾವನಾಭಿದ ಪಾವನಿ ಮತ ಭಾವಶೂನ್ಯ ಸತ್ ಭಾವಸುಸ್ಥಿ ಭಾವನಾ ಬಲಾತ್ ಭಕ್ತಿರುತ್ತಮ ಭಾವಶೂನ್ಯ ಸತ್ ಭಾವಸುಸ್ಥಿ ಭಾವನಾ ಬಲಾತ್ ಭಕ್ತಿರುತ್ತಮ ಭಾವಶೂನ್ಯ ಸತ್ ಭಾವಸುಸ್ಥಿ ಭಾವನಾ ಬಲಾತ್ ಭಕ್ತಿರುತ್ತಮ ಹೃಸ್ಥಲೇ ಮನ ಸ್ವಸ್ಥದ ಕ್ರಿಯ ಹೃಸ್ಥಲೇ ಮನ ಸ್ವಸ್ಥದ ಕ್ರಿಯ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಯೋಗ ಬೋಧಾಶ್ಚ ನಿಶ್ಚಿತ ಹೃಸ್ಥಲೇ ಮನ ಸ್ವಸ್ಥದ ಕ್ರಿಯ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಯೋಗ ಬೋಧಾಶ್ಚ ನಿಶ್ಚಿತ ಹೃಸ್ಥಲೇ ಮನ ಸ್ವಸ್ಥದ ಕ್ರಿಯ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಯೋಗ ಬೋಧಾಶ್ಚ ನಿಶ್ಚಿತ ಸೋ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ವೇವ್ ಆಫ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾಂಪೋಸಿಷನ್ as we have seen yesterday that uh, ramana maharshi is an outsider is a radical rebel and he is a silent person and he doesn't uh, engage in uh, theoretical disputations much it seems he has got a kind of aversion to aversion to theoretical disputations he think that all theories are ego projects so if you want to transcend the ego you must dump theories and argumentations that is his his vision his perception so he wouldn't encourage us much in such uh, argumentations so his uh, his objective is to some or other outwit the ego and go beyond so he doesn't want a frontal confrontation with the ego because if you're frontally confronting the ego the ego will some or other learn your learn from you and then out with you ego is infinitely creative in uh, in uh, frustrating all your attempt to transcend to go beyond to realize your true nature and he has been fighting with you all these while across birth after birth several births so it's it's always a losing battle with the ego so he some other quickly want to out with the ego and go beyond that's what he is trying to do so the very first uh, verse sloka says a kartu rajnaya that's the first one kartu rajnaya 
प्राप्यदे फलम कर्म किम परम कर्म तद जडम दैट इज द फर्स्ट श्लोक आई रीड इट वंस अगेन कर्तुहु आज्ञया प्राप्यदे फलम कर्म किम परम कर्म तद जडम तो मर्षि हियर makes a kind of commitment to a certain way of looking at the world and our experiences without engaging in much disputation somewhere deeply some something in in him says that this is how one should look at the world what's that he says kartuhu aajnaya prapyade bhalam bhala means the fruits of your actions we engage in uh, in action expecting certain outcome thinking that that will make you happy and complete we are engaging in activities human beings so we think by engaging in a certain program of activities we will be able to command desirable results and as a result of that you can be happy and content that is the ego project the ego project is making you to work hard thinking that at the end of the day you will be happy so it it has a assumption an analyzed assumption that this point you are not happy your happiness is out there happiness is at the end of the rainbow you have to reach there reach and touch the horizon then tomorrow or day after one day i'll be happy and i'll be fulfilled so ego never allows you to be happy right now here it always convinces you you are not happy at this point this is the famous idea of ignorance avidya ignorance we are convinced ourselves that we are unfulfilled unhappy limited and then based on that false unanalyzed conviction all other projects start that's the very foundation so we call it avidya from avidya comes a false sense of oneself a false identity which you call asmita and from asmita comes desire which you call self aggrandizing self centered desires those desires propels activities and that activity results in some kind of an outcome and when the outcome comes you feel frustrated and disappointed but then by the time you have created a certain habit patterns and then you are compelled to continue to do the same thing this is called the samsara chakra samsara chakra so ravana maharshi contemplates upon this samsara chakra or samsara sagara and he says human beings are engaged in those kind of activities which i would call the ego project the ego project and uh, and so the underlying con- belief is by my personal effort i will be able to create a desirable outcome <coughs> that's the underlying belief that by me or by me maybe a couple of people who think like me which is called as culture or a civilization or a community who thinks like you by our, our effort we will be able to command the resources of nature we will be able to reorganize nature according to our desire and then in that situation i'll i will be in heaven 
so that that's called the ego project and i can create my heaven around me uh so there is uh, essentially there is a direct correlation between what you do and what outcome you create it is only very late we started thinking of unintended outcomes invisible cost these days people have started talking like that economist and policy makers unintended outcomes and invisible cost so you have to factor the invisible cost you have to be careful aware of the unintended outcomes in uh, your projects that lately and that kind of a thinking you call eco project the other one is the ego project this is the eco project so here marshi uh, Uh, without indulging in engaging in much uh, disputation and discussion he offers an article of faith and so that he can outwit the ego and jump out of the old egoistic magic what is his article of faith kartuhu aajnaya prapyade bhalam bhalam in the outcome of your efforts karma bhalam do you see that word bhalam there bhalam bhala is a very key word bhala means the fruit that's the direct meaning of the word is the word uh, meaning of the word bhalam is fruit you know you plant a tree and a sapling and it grows and finally it gives you fruit so when you do a particular act of planting a sapling or a fruit tree the expectation is one day if not today the tree will give me fruits will, will will reward me so you see a direct correlation so here bhalam bhala mean the fruits of your action so you have to read it as karma bhalam karma bhalam and it is the karma bhala which determines your experiences for example you are sitting here and experiencing this enjoying or suffering this it is the result of your karma you did something you read a little uh, the advertisement and you decided to come here you acted on that decision and you are here now now there is no point in cursing anybody either enjoy it or suffer it <laughs> so he says this is called karma bhala so all that you go through in life today is the result of supposedly the result of karma bhala so this karma bhala what you are enjoying today or the result of your actions are kartuhu ajnaya prapyade all these are ordained ajna means order command so the fruits of your actions are ajnaya ordained by karta karta means the creator karta can mean the doer karta can mean creator so one who has created this universe who or he may be or the law that operates in this universe or the intelligence which is functioning in this universe whichever way you put it so marshi uses the word karta another word he uses is ishwara so two words ishwara and karta this may be uh, synonymous with uh, the english word god of course one has to understand the full meaning but uh, to begin with let us let me give a translation of the word karta karta means the creator the creator of the world the system the system one who has put this system in place is the system in which you are functioning a system which functions according to certain laws so this system who are put it in place is called karta and you are a part of that system as an individual jeeva you are part of the system of course you are a system you are a complex system functioning system but as a system as a whole 
you are part of another whole, another system, maybe a bigger system, complex though. So you are a whole as an individual, you are part of another whole, that is part of another whole. So this is called this is called the whole holonistic theory. You are a whole, you are part of another whole, and that is part of another whole, that is part of another whole. So this way we are holes in holes in holes. Purnamada, Purnamidam, that is whole, this also is whole. Maybe a, a cell is whole, it can create so many other cells similar to that. Cell is part of another whole, the organ. Organ is part of another whole, the organism. Organism is part of another whole, the society. Society is part of another whole, the, the life system. Society is part of another whole, nature. Nature is part of another whole, the cosmos. As it goes. So you are not an isolated individual, you are a one, a, a whole in a complex another whole. This is called the holonistic theory. If you read Ken Wilbur, he has worked on this, this theory and this is a Vedantic theory. So as an individual, you are not, you are only one part of the whole. That's the idea. You are not a separate individual. You are not an isolated individual. So if this is understood, Marshi says, all your actions take place in a context. And the context is very complex. So your action interacting with the complex system produces the result. When an apple falls from the tree, their falling is not determined neither by the tree nor by the apple. It's a very complex system which is in operation there. Because of which the apple, when it snaps from the stem, it falls. So this idea, Marshi places here, Kartruhu Ajnaya Prapyade Bhalam. The fruits of your actions are ordained by the karta, the creator. So we have not yet understood who is the creator and all that. The only thing we know that we don't have absolute control over the consequences of our action or the outcome of our action. Individual, though he initiate the action, he has no complete control. This is what I call situating the ego in the context. You are situating yourself in a bigger context and then function. So, this is what Ramana Maharshi says in the first line of the sloga. Kartruhu ajnaya prapyade bhalam. The karma bhalas, fruits of one's actions, are ordained by the Creator, the Lord, God, whatever you want to say. Or it is, it function, you function in a complex system. And therefore you don't have complete control over the system. Though you may try to control, we don't have complete controls. So therefore you must wait for the outcome and accept whatever may be the outcome of your action. You have no other choice. Either you grudgingly accept or happily accept. There is no other choice. Either grudgingly accept and fall ill or happily accept and enjoy the process. There is no other choice. Because the universe is too complex and bigger than what you think and what can understand. The only thing we can say that there may be some meaning and purpose in whatever is happening in your life. Which we may realize later, we will be able to connect all the dots and say, oh, there was a meaning in what is, what is happening. So that way, one should relax and be ready for any outcome that comes as a result of your action. Because the 
variables are too many and uh, control over all those variables are difficult and all those variables put together complex Marshi calls it is God. There is a God uh, superintending all your action at it at he who wills. So his will is supreme. Your will is subservient to the will of God. Though you are the initiator, but you are, your will is subservient to the will of God. When you are traveling in a train, the speed of your uh, travel depends upon the speed of the train. You may run in the train up and down. That doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't take you faster to the destination. The, tra the train has to move or the plane has to move. You may run up and down, ask everybody and uh, when the train will reach, but there's no point, he says. <coughs> so the central message is relax. There's a God up there. And uh, there is a general scheme according which things happen. So here, you know, I, you can bring the, uh, the disputation uh, among theologists. The theology, some people say it is all predetermined, predestination theory. In Sanskrit, we call it vidhivada. Everything is determined in the very beginning. And you have to only read the script and then play out whatever role has been given to you. You have no choice at all. One argument. You are like a puppet. And as the puppeteer moves his fingers and the strings move and you have to act accordingly. The theory of predetermination. Everything is determined. And your role is to, your job is to act out. And if you defy, then defy this, then it will create illness, sickness and problems, violence, etc. So there is one argument. So the theological position. The vidhivada or theory of predetermination or the will of God. Then the another vada is a free will. Another theological position. You have the freedom of choice. You can decide your destiny. Your future is not determined at the time of your birth. Astrology has no meaning in all those things. Like Obama said, so your future is not determined by the time of your birth, where you are born, the circumstance of your birth. It's your effort. You can achieve whatever you want. The limit of your success, the limit of your dreams, nothing is impossible. If you will it, if you can imagine it, dream it, you can get it. You know, all that kind of argument. So there is another theological position of, which says that free will, human beings have the choice to determine his future. And in Sanskrit we call it Purusha Karavada or Purusharth. The other one is Vidhivada. Vidhivada. Here it is Purusharth. And the third, of course, is Yadrichavadam or chance. Everything is matter of chance, random choice. Nothing can be decided. You know, everything just happens like that. It's all discrete and random happenings. Don't find, try to seek any cause for that. Nothing is caused by anything. It's all, it is all just happening. Enjoy the moment. That's another argument. Everything Yadricha, nobody has any control. And uh, there is no causal relationship between a previous happening and the present happening. And this is called Yadricha Vadam in, in the Sanskrit literature. So three arguments, predestination, choice, meaning God, human choice, or uh, chance, things are just happening. Now, Marshi says, you can keep on arguing. You can take one position and keep on arguing till the cows come home. You will never reach anywhere. So, what is more important is action. You have to, you have to organize your life. And you cannot keep on arguing, arguing. And uh, so, one has to make certain commitment. Certain 
visceral choice, gut choice, one has to make. So Maharshi says, I choose this path, this method, that everything is ordained by God. And I am ready to accept. Whatever happens is happens under the supervision of God. In the watch of God. Therefore, I accept whatever happens. I accept his intelligence or her intelligence or its intelligence. So there is no argument. There is no questioning. Accept. I do my little bit, my might and leave the rest to the Lord and I am happy with his decision for me. Isn't it a beautiful position? So you can relax. This is how he activates the ego. So he, he manages the affairs of the world with this attitude. So since you take that position, it is easy to deal with the world, what is happening in your life. Otherwise you will keep on asking, why me? Why it happened to me? Why it didn't happen to anybody else? God must be very cruel or partial or he does not know my problems and or there is no God. So all these uh, argumentations is futile. It doesn't lead you anywhere. So he makes an initial commitment. And thereafter, because his objective is somewhere else. His objective is not to prove God or karma, karma bhala and all that. His objective is to know who he is. His objective is not to get caught up in these arguments and, and these processes. He wants to get out of this. So he says, I accept that everything happens by the command, will of God. All that happens in my life. So there is no argument. This is what he is continuously believed. And he organi organized his life based on this belief. And when you organize this life based on this belief, so much miracles can happen. Of course, you can organize your life based on other belief also. Everything is based on human effort. That also can give you a long, long mileage. Not that it's not possible. That is the belief on which the American culture and civilization is built. Everything is individual effort. God can watch and be there. You see, as uh, so, it is everything individual effort. Or the other argument: everything is by chance. Whether you work or not, whether you do or not, things happen by chance. They will. They are, they are happening without any rhyme or reason. Don't try to find the patterns in it. That is again another ego project, he says. Finding patterns and trying to influence things and create theories. So let us accept this. Everything happens by the will of God. And organize your thought. Organize your approach according to that. So, Kartru Rajnaya Prapyade Bhalam. Karma Bhala is ordained by God. Karta. So please understand their karta. Karthu means by the karta. Karta means the creator. So karthu means by the creator. The Sanskrit is a declining language. So uh, the prepositions are added to the word itself. Karthu means by the karta. By the creator. Now he further amplifies his statement in the next line. Karma kim param. Therefore, understand kim. Is it uh, so? Kim is, is it so? That karma is param. Karma is independent. Meaning, is karma independent? This being the truth, can karma, your self-effort, be independently efficacious in producing the desired result? You ask a question. Param means independent. Powerful. So Kim means a question. He is asking a question. Is it so? What is the question? Can individual effort, karma, karma means individual effort, be efficacious in creating a desired result? What is the answer? No. Because 
your karma is important it is only an instrument it is only one among the many variables in producing a result so the question is karma kim param why do you think your effort is independently efficacious if this is the truth so what is the answer one should not think the karma is independently efficacious because tad karma jadam karma is jadam it is dependent in art you know if you take a sword and cut somebody's throat it is not the sword who is responsible for that you cannot take the sword to the court i didn't do it is the person who wielded the sword is to be blamed so karma is not independently efficacious it is part of a cosmic scheme one has to factor that in your thinking and therefore the second line says by a rhetorical question is your effort can be your effort be independently efficacious and the answer is it can't why karma is jadam jada means inert it is powerless it has no power suddenly the sword cannot get up and cut your throat it is only a jada vastu an inert it is only a function it's only a structure and the function of the structure but somebody else have to activate the structure some other so there is always a conscious way in making all this happen so therefore karma is not independently efficacious your individual effort is not independently efficacious in creating any outcome outcomes are created by the whole system so when you plant a tree don't think that because you planted the tree the tree is growing the tree is growing because of various other factors the soil there is sun there is mineral there is water there is air no other wild animals are coming and biting it off or somebody is not stealing it away because of all these reasons finally one day you say oh my effort has given me fruit it is not your effort alone there are several factors involved this i would call the ecological awareness the other one is a egoistic awareness in egoistic awareness you say this is mine that fruit is mine why because i planted it in ecological awareness say, this fruit is ours because we all cooperate even a thief cooperates how because he has not come and taken it away you must thank him that he have not done that or an animal he has not destroyed it or rains too much rain too little rain everything can frustrate your effort there are several lips slips between the cup and the lip 